Right now, the notch on the iPhone is like this big. But what if it was like this big? Want tech news in a way that doesn't suck? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications and you'll save a puppy. You like, uh, you like puppies, don't you? Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Front Page Tech FPT Fapata, the show that gives you all of this tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. Happy Monday, Apple. What is this? What the f- Whoa. What is that? I've had this for a few weeks now and it's the worst. It's unusable. The MagSafe wallet is the worst. I mean, hey, at least they put their logo on it, right? That way you know it is an official piece of shit. You know, I thought that venting about it might help make me feel better, but it doesn't, it doesn't help at all. It's just, the best part is you didn't have to make it. You didn't have to make it and sell it, but you did. You gave me a problem with magnets on the back. Hey, at least it's got magnets. Timothy, Tim Cook, do you use it? You have a lot of money. Would you put your Tim Cook money in this and then put it on your phone and hope for the best? Probably not. All right, so first up for the day, story numero uno. Before we jump into iPhone 13 stuff, let's talk about Apple Car. I mean, the last thing we heard about this thing was that they were just, they stopped for a second. It was a lot of work. They decided, ha uh can't do this right now. And so they kind of put it on the back burner. I mean, that was the last thing we heard and we haven't really heard anything since. Oh, but now, yeah, it's ready. Apparently, according to this brand new report from Economic Daily News, uh, Apple Car production will be ramping up and we will see it in September of 2021. You know, the Apple Car that we've pretty much heard nothing about that's supposed to be like self-driving, all electric. Yeah, it's ready. Here we go. I mean, other analysts were telling us somewhere around 2025 is when we would sort of start to see this thing, but nope. Economic Daily News says next year, 2021. Buckle up, buckaroos. Buckle up, buckaroo. Now, there's this weird, I got this weird feeling. There's a weird problem with this report. Um, so to sort of break this down, let's go to one of our favorite Apple websites. You see, there's a website for this sort of thing. Apple Track will tell you the reliability of all leakers in the Apple sphere. Oh, hey, look, there's me. But if we keep on scrolling, we can see, ah, uh, yes, there's the issue. That's the problem. Economic Daily News, 36.8% accurate. In fact, they're the lowest rated source on the website. <laughs> so, uh, if that helps with anything here. You don't, you don't need me to tell you, right? You don't need my opinion. This is not, it's not a thing. This is not real. I mean, how they came up with this, I don't, I don't really know. I would assume that somebody turned to Economic Daily News and was like, Hey guys, guess what? Uh, Apple's working on brand new features for CarPlay and it's coming out next year. It's gonna be sweet. And Economic Daily News went, Apple CarPlay, car, Apple, Apple car. Hey everyone, Apple car coming next year. Anyway, it is not, okay? We're clear here. When we leave this episode, we have a full understanding that it's not coming next year. Okay. All right. All right. So next up, AirPods Max. Got a bit of a clarification from Apple about how this sort of stuff is working. So as you know, uh, there's no way to turn AirPods Max off. Like you, they're on and then that's it. You can't really turn them off. Unless, of course, you put them in the case, you put them in the case, and then it puts it in low power mode or what? it's off. It, it, that's the only way to turn them off is to put them in the case. So for the past week or so, everyone sort of just assumed that you take your AirPods Max off and that's it, you just watch them die. That's it, you just stand there and the battery drains until they're dead. Well, not to worry, Apple has clarified what is actually happening here. So according to them, which if, I mean, they would know, <laughs> the case is not as important as we thought. They've actually updated their AirPods Max support page with some more better information. Originally, Apple was telling us that when stored in their soft, slim, smart case, AirPods Max enter an ultra low power state that preserves charge. But then of course, everyone was like, but what if no in the case? They now say that AirPods Max enter a low power mode when they were removed from your head or left stationary for five minutes outside of the case. Now, if they are in that state, that low power mode state for 72 hours, then they go into an even lower power mode 
that switches off features like Bluetooth. And that sort of sounds like them being um, off. Cause why? Why would there be a button or something to turn it off or like a feature in software to turn these things off? That would be, that would be ridiculous. No, no, no. Tim Cook, Tim Cook will do it for you. So Tim, uh, can I like, uh, I, I don't know, turn these off? Yeah, they'll turn off. Okay, but is there like a button or something? Uh-uh. What? What do you mean? Uh-uh. Did, how do I turn them off? I do. Huh? What do you mean you do? I do. You do? I do. So like, we shouldn't worry about turning our own hardware off, right? Because Tim Cook from California will figure it out. He'll do it. Yes. Uh, uh okay. All right, last up, here we go. Let's talk about iPhone 13 and that sweet old notch. Now, this report comes from DigiTimes. That's the first That's the first thing I want to say here. That's the first note is that it, it comes from DigiTimes. And DigiTimes has the accuracy of like Stevie Wonder playing darts. According to this report, all four models of iPhone 13 will have LiDAR sensors, not just two Pro models. And according to them, those will likely be direct time of flight sensors. Now, hang on, we're gonna get to the whole notch part. There's just a few sections of this report. Like the next part of it states that the rear camera setup will be a bit different for iPhone 13. If you've ever seen teardowns of iPhones for the last few years, the ones with the notches, they have to position the camera lens that is closest to the center of the phone down a bit. That's to make room for all the tech that goes inside the notch. That's why that third lens is positioned the way it is and why we haven't seen an array like this, like some renders that we've seen from past rumors. That's because to get a camera array like this, then the notch on the front would have to be smaller. Otherwise, there's no room for this. However, if they changed the notch. Another part of this report states that Apple will streamline the chip in the front camera setup and improve its 3D sensing capabilities and streamlining would allow them to shrink the notch. Okay, you following? Now let's jump to a leak that I gave you earlier this year, way earlier 2020. You might remember this, this real hardware sketch of an iPhone prototype, specifically the notch layout. This prototype specifically goes all the way back to iPhone 11. That's how long this sort of layout has been considered, where they shift the speaker out of the notch and sort of up into the bezel and then condense that camera array, which obviously allows the notch to be smaller. This is where I would like everyone to be a bit cautious about this report. First of all, <laughs> it's DigiTimes. That's number one. Second, it's still pretty early on here, and there are many prototypes for iPhone 13. Like I said, this smaller notch prototype has been in the works for years. Will we finally see it for iPhone 13? Maybe, but these phones are too early on in the process for me to put my name on anything right now. Once I have more concrete info from my sources, I'll share it with you. I'm not DigiTimes. My advice would be to just sort of settle down, ride this out, manage your expectations a bit. Let's wait a few more months before we get our hearts set on any of these rumors. You remember how all the iPhone 12 stuff went. We believe this phone was going to have a smaller notch all the way up until like a month or two before when we showed you that it's actually going to be the same size notch. Either way, just sort of manage expectations here for a bit until we can have more some more how, until we can have more some reliable information, kids. Okay. There are screen protectors, and then there's paper-like. Protection, yes, but paper-like adds an entire new layer to your iPad that transforms your experience. Write or draw on your iPad with paper-like applied, and it quite literally feels like you're organically writing on paper real paper, except for all the digital benefits of your iPad for when you f up. The nano dot layer is something that videos simply will not do justice. You have to get it for yourself to experience it. Oh, and also it's a matte screen protector, which are just always superior. No fingerprints, no glare. It's great. Again, you have to try it. At the very least, click the link in the description to learn more. And of course, a huge thanks to Paperlike for supporting this show. 
And that's the show. Hopefully you liked it, you learned something. If you did, hit the like button. If you hate my stupid face, the dislike button, that works too. If you're new here, subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Like.